What's up guys, it's Rob here and today we're going to be talking about Sundial stock, ticker symbol SNDL, because this stock is actually having a kind of cruddy day. It's down about 6%, but there is really good cannabis related news that could be moving them up. In the future, we're going to talk about three different things that could be moving up Sundial stock, even though they have been moving down over the past couple of days. Let's take a look at the chart, see what I'm talking about. You can see this is today right here. We are down about 6%, and this is following a week of extremely negative momentum, right? We've basically just been moving down in a straight line, getting pushed down ever since we pumped up on the earnings call uh, because it was a very good earnings call, and we're looking at a potential situation where we could be getting cannabis legalized in the United States fairly soon. We've talked about that in many of our videos, but we're going to talk about why Sundell's moving down. First of all, obviously, shorts have a hand to play in this short increase Short interest has increased by 2.64% on the day, bringing us up to 333 million shares short, and 16% of the free float is also short. We are also very high on the utilization scale, right? 98% of the shares available to short have already been shorted. Uh, so, you know, shorts do just keep on finding these shares, you know, seemingly out of nowhere, they're just finding these shares to short sundial with. Uh, but they can't keep it up forever, I suspect. I suspect that eventually they'll have to slow down their shorting and potentially start buying back shares of Sundial because there is a lot of good stuff in Sundial's pipeline that I expect will be moving Sundial up fairly soon. I'm thinking that by the end of the year, especially by February, we could be moving up uh, very much with Sundial. So uh, first off, what has happened with Uber? Uber enters a booming cannabis market with orders in Ontario. So they're not a cannabis producer. Obviously, Uber is a delivery service and a ride sharing service. And uh, basically what happened is Uber Technologies will allow users in Ontario to place orders for cannabis on its Uber Eats app. Very interesting. So Uber Eats will list cannabis retailer Tokyo Smoke. Notice Tokyo Smoke is the retailer, the only one that they're listing right now. Not any Sundial, uh, no Tilray, no... Uh, Aurora Cannabis, just Tokyo Smoke on its marketplace on Monday, and customers can place orders from the Uber Eats app and then pick it up at the nearest store. So they're not actually even delivering these orders, right? They're just allowing you to place the orders for pickup. They don't let you uh, have a driver deliver to you yet. I believe that's still technically illegal in Canada, but potentially in the future, they will be allowing it. And this could only serve to benefit the cannabis market, right? If they start, especially if they start listing other retailers like Sundial, uh, then potentially we could see a lot of uh, additional buying pressure for this. You know, if people are already smoking and they don't want to leave their homes and they just want to have something ordered to them, it could be very good for uh, these cannabis companies. So uh, Uber would benefit from this and uh, the cannabis companies will certainly benefit from this, especially as they expand uh, what they're able to do, right? They already deliver liquor through the Eats unit, so it's likely only a matter of time until they're actually allowed to deliver cannabis as well. And the company will consider delivering cannabis when the legal coast is clear in the United States. And uh, we're going to talk about the market caps of uh, the cannabis market in Canada. And I can only imagine how big it's going to be in the United States, but Canada's is already pretty large. It's currently sitting at $4 billion in 2021 and is forecast to grow to $6.7 billion in 2026. The United States market, we all know, we don't actually know how big it will be, but once it's fully legal, it will likely be much bigger than that. And uh, it is notable, though, another issue plaguing the Canadian cannabis market, which will likely plague the U.S. cannabis market, is that even though we've been three years into legalization of recreational cannabis, they're still trying to fix the market where illegal producers control a very large share of the market, right? Illegal producers are still producing a lot of the cannabis that people are consuming, about 40% of all non-medical cannabis sales nationally. So that is unfortunate for a lot of the cannabis producers, but we can only imagine how good their numbers are going to be once they start taking over more of this 40%. Once uh, potentially Canada loosens some restrictions on it, lowers taxes on it, makes it a little bit more affordable for producers to operate, we can only imagine how good their numbers are going to be if they end up doing that, right? So that is something that we'll want to watch out for in the U.S. when we talk about legalization in the future. We're going to want to make sure that the bills that are being proposed aren't uh, too strict regarding cannabis production and taxation on it. We don't want people turning to illegal means of uh, producing cannabis. We'd much rather them go through the legal means, use these companies like Sundial uh, and buy their products from them because that will be actually be good for the companies. And, uh, you know, potentially uh, these illegal producers won't be doing as well, but maybe they could join in and uh, get a job at an actual cannabis production company. Now, the second thing that we need to talk about is D.C. lawmakers are holding a joint hearing on marijuana legalization bill in anticipation of the end to the federal ban. So this is actually important. This isn't uh, federal legalization that they're talking about in Washington. It's local. So Washington, D.C. is talking about local de uh, legalization of cannabis, right? 
Uh, lawmakers on Friday held a joint hearing on a pair of bills to authorize the legal sale of recreational marijuana and significantly expand the existing medical cannabis program in the nation's capital. So they actually have already legalized home possession, home cultivation, and gifting of cannabis in 2014. Uh, however, a uh, congressional writer blocked the district from using its tax, tax dollars to implement a regulated system of sale. So they've not yet been able to do that. Uh, and it will, if they end up passing this bill that they were specifically talking about, they will be requiring that 50% of the tax revenue from the sale of cannabis be deposited into a community reinvestment program fund and require automatic expungement of DC code cannabis related arrests and conviction and convictions. So uh, really cool stuff, really cool stuff. And uh, this is only serving to increase the hype around legalization, and increase the likelihood that we actually see it. If they start legalizing it in D.C. itself, it would be somewhat hypocritical for the lawmakers in D.C. Uh, for Congress to not legalize it federally. If D.C. itself has legal sales, uh, then it would only make sense for legalization across the United States to take place. Uh, I really just can't see a situation where they can justify legalizing it where they live and then keeping it illegal for everyone else. It really wouldn't make much sense. And the main reason that they're considering this, once again, is they are anticipating an end to the federal ban. So uh, the lawmakers in D.C. probably know better than us what's going to happen. And if they're starting to talk about legalizing it in D.C., uh, it may be the case that legalization is coming to the U.S. sooner than we think, which we actually think it's pr coming pretty soon, probably, right? Uh, and we actually, speaking of legalization, just saw legalization in Germany, right? Germany is set to legalize marijuana nationwide after the major parties reach an agreement. The party leaders in Germany's incoming government coalition have reached an agreement to legalize marijuana nationwide. Now, this is really cool, although I will note that it is not as important for Sundial as it is for some other cannabis companies. Sundial has no ties to Germany. They have no ties to Europe. Tilray, on the other hand, may actually be benefiting from this news, so this could be good for Tilray. Uh, it doesn't affect Sundial the most, not in a direct sense at least. However, it is increasing cannabis acceptance across the world, and that's only a good thing, right? If the United States sees that other uh, countries, especially renowned countries such as Germany, you know, European countries, uh, these aren't no-name countries, right? Germany is a pretty, uh, pretty big deal. If the United States sees that Germany is legalizing it, it could be very likely that the United States will follow suit. It's not a guarantee. But it is only increasing the acceptance that we have worldwide for cannabis, which is a good thing overall for a Sundial stock. Now, very briefly, we will look at some of the analytics regarding Sundial, right? You can see that Sundial over the past week has been waning a little bit in search popularity on Google Trends. That trend is continuing today. We are slightly lower here than we were on Friday. So unfortunately, Sundial is losing a little bit of its hype. You can see that as well on Reddit that we are nowhere near the top of the list. You actually have to scroll down all the way to spot number 28 to see Sundial Growers, though it is notable that they're up 23 spots today, likely because they got some hype coming into Monday off the weekend. A lot of people have been posting about them. They have 392% more mentions uh, today than they did yesterday, than they did 24 hours ago, although it still doesn't count for much, right? It's only 59 mentions and 147 upvotes. We could really get this much higher, I think, if we start seeing Sundial move up in price. I think a lot more people would start talking about the short squeeze potential because it is actually massive, right? There are 333 million shares short. 16% of the free float is short. I think that we could really see a big short squeeze on Sundial if we get a lot of people talking about that on Reddit. If we get a lot of people moving into Sundial, obviously we would need to rise price-wise a lot to actually trigger a short squeeze, uh, but that's the case with every short squeeze. And I am very bullish on Sundial over the long term. I think that Sundial is going to be doing very well in the future, especially uh, ending the year and starting the new year. I think that they're going to try, they're going to have to try to get above a dollar if they want to keep from being delisted in February. So I think the management has a lot of pressure to start those share buybacks pretty soon. And we'll see what goes on with Sundial, right? I'm very bullish. I'm still holding my Sundial. I'm not trying to convince anyone to do anything with their Sundial. This video is not financial advice. It's just my opinion. So I'm not trying to convince you to buy Sundial or sell it. I'm just here to give you guys some of the news regarding Sundial stock and some of the potential catalysts that could be moving them up in the future. So other than that, guys, I hope you have a great day. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.